Uganda's human rights record has come under sharp strain since the 2021 presidential election. The announcement of the closure of the United Nations Human Rights Office perhaps came as a final onslaught on the respect, promotion and protection of human rights. Critics of government have accused it of the use of security services to maim, torture, kidnap, arrest and in extreme cases kill its opponents. But the Uganda Human Rights Commission, the body charged with defending those rights, has recently been pushing back. Tonight on the spot, we host David Lewis Lubongoya, the Secretary General of the National Unity Platform, and Kamadi Bionavye, a director in the Uganda Human Rights Commission. Mr. David Lewis Lubongoya and Kamadi Bionavye. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us tonight on this show. A warm welcome to both of you. Thank you very much and a good evening to the viewers. Thank you, Patrick. A good evening to our viewers. Let me begin with you, David Lewis Lubongoya, as Secretary General of the National Unity Platform. I have heard from your quarters that you have names and people of those Ugandans who have disappeared, and some of them, you say, have actually been abducted or taken by security agencies. What is at play as we speak? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, like we've constantly told the nation, um, these abductions are still ongoing. Uh, from the election, we, you know, we had about 5,000 people who were either abducted or illegally arrested. And there's a difference between an abduction and a legal, illegal. An illegal arrest. And you know, we've been struggling since then. Uh, the numbers have come down. Many of them were uh, either dumped in swamps, in forests after the election. Others, of course, were charged before the military court, uh, even when they are civilians. And many of them are still facing charges before the general court marshal. Others were released on bail. But as I speak, we still have about 18 people who we have verified, who uh, disappeared from the time of the elections. But you see abductions are ongoing. So for example, last year when I submitted a list of 25 people to the Uganda Human Rights Commission, that included people who had just been abducted. So even as I speak yesterday, uh, some people were abducted. Uh, two days back in, in uh, Nakaseke, uh, two of our young people were abducted. Up to now, nobody knows where they are. So that is why uh, this question of abductions is ongoing. If I was to write a list now, I will talk about 30 people. But the people who have been missing for about two years, and those who are, who are verified, including uh, John Bosco Chivarama, who has been missing for about four years, uh, about 18. <coughs> but of course, these are the ones who we have verified as, uh, with our human rights office, who, where we're in touch with families and all that. But there are many others. You know, today a young man came uh, to our office, and he's been on uh, one of the lists of uh, people who were abducted last year, uh, towards the end. And, you know, he has just been released. Uh, he was released uh, on Monday. So, so that is the challenge that, that you have. You have constant abduction. And, uh, you know, for example, a young man called Agaba Anthony, uh, Bobby Young, he was abducted, kept under uh, incommunicado detention for eight days, and eventually <coughs> produced before the military court. Now he's at uh, Luzira upper, upper Prison. So the reason why we call this abduction, first of all, is that the people who come to pick these people uh, don't even identify themselves. They are not dressed in, in uniform, in non-uniforms. They are not moving in uh, authorized vehicles. They are just moving, some of them move in taxis. Uh, they behave like bandits, like thugs. You know, someone comes with a taxi, stops you and bundles you into a uh, waiting vehicle. I had to a very, very big disappointment, the so-called chairperson of the Uganda Human Rights Commission, saying that we are bastardizing the word abduction, that we should call them arrests. Come on. The Constitution of Uganda provides for how a person should be arrested. So you have given us the names, you have given us the number, you've given us the experiences as, as Secretary General of No. Where have you gone to seek redress? And what, have they, told you? And what have they told you? Everywhere. We've gone to uh, the courts of law. Uh, a gentleman called Damulila John was picked up from uh, Chiseka Market in 2020. Mm. Up to now, nobody knows where he is. We went to court, secured the habeas corpus order. There is a court order because people saw him being taken out by the military. Chibarama John Bosco, we've been to every place, police, courts, ETC. We've written to the Uganda Human Rights Commission a number of times. 
no, the, I talked about the, the, the letter I wrote in November last year, but we've been complaining several times about these abductions. To the Uganda Human Rights Commission, no action. Okay, Mr. Bionabi Kamadi, you are the defender of the rights of Ugandans. As Uganda Human Rights Commission, you are seated in that, of, in that chair because you are representing the, 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 uh, the chairperson of the commission. You've had the complaints of NOOP. You've had the complaints of Ugandans. What he says and what he's saying right now, is it something that you know? Oh, of course it is something that uh, we know. The Uganda Human Rights Commission has a mandate under Article 52 of the Constitution to investigate at its own initiative or on a complaint by, made by anybody regarding allegations of human rights violations. Now, in 2021, like you introduced the subject matter, we read in the media uh, of people who had gone missing, allegedly missing. We treat every complaint that come to the commission as an allegation because we must uh, ensure that the principles of natural justice are adhered to. We don't hear that uh, Patrick has gone missing and we confirm until investigations are conducted. And indeed, on our own, in 2021, we initiated investigations. In the central region here alone, we found out that uh, 51 people had gone missing. And uh, central, I mean, we have a central region office here uh, that is uh, in, Tinder, in, in, Naguru. In, in, in Naguru. Yes. Now, Actually, all cases were from the central region because the other 18 were under Masaka Region Office and in particular in Kyotera. So uh, a total of 69. And what I'm telling you is documented in the 24th Annual Report of the Commissioned Parliament for the year 2021. And uh, due to our intervention, 64 of the 69 by this by 31st december 2021 had been released okay so these people are not missing because when you talk about them being released then you know who has them why he has them so who releasing them who is releasing them i'm talking about the 64 yes but who, that is, who is releasing them and who is holding them they were in the hands of a number of state security agencies. So, this the government of Uganda is abducting its own people. There is a contention on the use of the word abduction. Okay, the government but, uh, of Uganda in is this, illegally in this, arresting its own people. In this discussion, I would uh, I would like us not to focus more on terminologies and I'm semantics. Not, no, 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 uh, uh, Mr. Kamadi yeah. Bionobi, you said six to nine people were under arrest or, or, it, or, or went missing. It is documented. Yes, it is documented. Yes. But with your intervention, 64 were released. I am asking you, who is releasing them? Now, the... Who is, who is causing them getting lost, missing when, from their own? When we conducted the police and other security agencies, others, the, the, way, the way some of them were um, found, it was a case of, if I come to complain to you today, that so and so is missing. The following day, somebody is dropped uh, a, a, at a certain place X, and you don't know who has brought him there. So I cannot completely account. You know, when you, you when you say <coughs> they were missing and sixty-four are released, yes, you actually mean you know who was holding them, and the statement of release, you know the process they've gone through, you know who was holding them. And you, you are a, a, a department of government. And I'm asking you whether the Uganda Human Rights Commission is aware that the state of Uganda is, uh, is abducting its own people. I want to put this discussion in context. Under Article 23 of the Constitution, everybody has a right to be protected. It's about protection of the right to personal liberty. True. But there are circumstances under which that uh, protection can be deprived of someone. And those circumstances are clearly laid down. In the interest of time, I may not mention all of them, but one of them is if one has committed a crime under the laws of Uganda, 
or is suspected to be about to commit a crime. And uh, these cases we are talking about, the, our findings indicate that uh, they were being accused of committing certain crimes or others were about to commit certain crimes. So in my view, the issue should not be the use of the word abduction, missing, disappeared, as long as a Ugandan citizen is found, is, cannot be accounted for, should be a concern for everybody. So, what, so, and so then what, we, we look at protecting the personal liberty on, on of that person. On one point, you don't want to use the words, the titles. On one point, you don't want semantics. On another side, you are bringing them. You are saying, let's not just use the terminologies. But you are stopping us. So what word should we use you see, when a Ugandan goes missing? Um, what word should, you, this, should we use? This discussion when people <coughs> see a Ugandan being forced in a vehicle that is not of police or military, what should we use? Uh, if that's not, if that is not abduction, Patrick, what is that? I want us to discuss this subject matter in a mature manner. We are talking about something that started happening in 2021. 2022 ended. We are in 2023. And is telling you there are still allegations of uh, people being abducted, missing, arrested, etc. Therefore, uh, and recently we have seen the matter is before Parliament, the Right Honourable Deputy Speaker of Parliament and the Right Honourable Prime Minister are interfacing over this matter. And uh, by the time Parliament went on recess, it had not, they had not yet reached a compromise. Therefore, it's a matter we should not take lightly. The issue, if the, the, the underlying issue here is if there are people missing, they should be accounted for. Okay, okay. Whether you use abduction, whether you use arrest, because even if they were arrested, our constitution says, if not earlier released within 48 hours, should be produced before court. And once somebody's right to liberty is under threat, it's not only liberty, it is liberty and security of person. There are other attendant rights, right to life, freedom from torture, being treated in, uh, uh, with dignity and uh, the, 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 to be with people, uh, to so be with me, the let family. Me, let me come back here to David uh, Rongoya because perhaps he can even give you more inf information or you can maybe cross check. So, all these people who are missing, including the 18 who are confirmed, maybe whom you, uh, you know. Maybe you know, be, before you go sir. back to him, yes. it's important for me to finalize this. Now, I was telling you about our findings as at 31st December. 2021. Now, 2022, indeed, like he has said, there have been correspondences between the party leadership and the commission. And he presented a list recently, uh, uh, he has talked about of, uh, of the 25. And uh, our investigations uh, indicated that uh, seven, uh, seven of them are actually not missing, they are available and uh, our investigations are still continuing and within a short time we shall be able to uh, uh, to, 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 to produce Verif findings. verify his yes his yeah and also come out and state what we shall have found out so it is a challenge in our midst and uh, every law abiding citizen should be concerned that this matter needs to be addressed normally when these people are taken abducted or illegally arrested uh, do you get to know where they are taken? What kind of stories do they come back with? In what state do they return, some of those who return? First of all, it's a, a, a shame because you see the Human Rights Commission should be the vanguard of human rights in this country. If you look at Article 52 of the Constitution, Article 53, the Constitution gives the Commission a lot of powers. The challenge we have in this country is that Genome 70, as he has captured all institutions, he has captured the Uganda Human Rights Commission. Just see the commissioners there, from the chairperson, recently they had Simeon Subuga going there as a commissioner. So you don't expect much from such a, a commission. No wonder they are now closing the UN Human Rights Office, which should be uh, <coughs> checking uh, these institutions and all that. So when he's, he says that there were only 64 people they, they, they had on their own initiative found missing, it's a shame because you know that there were thousands of people who were actually abducted. And we have long lists of people 
You know, you, you, uh, you, you, you run stories here of people, he's talking about Chotera. I'm actually uh, showing um, my viewers the, the, the numbers and the, 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 the name numbers and people who have yeah. gone missing. Uh, um, and the families that are in Agone. The families in Agone, that uh, uh, old man who was recently abducted and then eventually ended up dead. And then the police came out to say he, he, he slipped off and fell in, uh, in, in the washroom or something like that. <laughs> but the point is that there were very, very many people who were abducted. And some of them actually died in detention, in, in those uh, illegal places where they keep them. And, you know, the, uh, the media covered these stories. People in Mukono who were found dead in swamps and, and forests in the aftermath of the election. And what we, the, the, the numbers that we're talking about now are those of people who are still missing from way back. But like I said, abductions are still ongoing. I told you that in Kapeka, P abductions have been going on uh, here in Kampala and other places. Um, so if, for example, he says that uh, the, the, the commission did investigations and found that the list I gave them of 25 people, that seven of them are not missing, I want to remind him that Kavma Jamshid was on that list. He was kept out for 30 days before he was eventually dumped at Old Kampala Police Station. Uh, he had a bullet wound in his leg. He had been badly tortured together with other four young people who had also been on that list for 30 days. So for some of those people who come and those who have come to your desk, have you also been able to verify that actually there are state agencies, in some cases, that have illegally arrested Ugandans? The, the issue of illegal detention, sorry, illegal arrest, would arise if um, somebody is not arrested by somebody authorized to be arrested. And uh, like I said at the beginning, if uh, 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 it is in everybody's interest to follow the law, the people, uh, Mr. The, the, people Mr. Yuna, the people who arrest... Mr. Yunabi, I'm yes. asking whether yes. the commission has at one point established that the state of Uganda, using different agencies, has involved itself in the disappearance of people. And have you gotten some people from state agencies? This is what I have just told you. No. That on I'm our own initiative, we found that 69 people in 2021 had gone missing. And out of those, 64 were accounted for by the time the 2021 so, report the, the was The 64 who were accounted for, yeah. had they been arrested legally? Yes, they had been arrested. So according to you, the government of Uganda and the state agencies have not involved themselves in the illegal detention and holding people in ungazetted places of detention. Is that what you're saying? The, uh, it is a two-way process. Which, which way and which way? Those who are arrested in line with the dictates of the law, we cannot call that an illegal detention. That's not what arrest. I'm asking for. Yeah. I am asking whether the Human Rights Commission of Uganda has one or two cases or more of where state agencies are involved in arresting Ugandans or holding them illegally. Now, this is what Mr. some of, this is what some of the victims say. I this was, is not uh, what they say. No, no, I'm to, coming you to you. Investigate. I'm coming to what are you are telling us, Mr. Yanavi? That it, as let a commission, me respond. you have not found I'm, even one case. I'm even one case. I'm responding to your question. I don't know why you are in a rush, and you want me to say what you want to hear. The issue is there are people who say I was picked up put in uh, what is called a drone, a numberless vehicle, and uh, whisked away. Now, that would, uh, that would qualify for an illegal arrest because the standards are clear. The standards are clear. You must uh, identify yourself, tell somebody the reason for his or her arrest, and the people should be uh, taken to gazetted uh, uh, places authorized by the law. Now. For those cases that were not pick, uh, people not picked up by the Uganda police or the UPDF, people who can be identified, those qualify to be illegal arrests. But it's not that everybody who was arrested was arrested in that manner. So, so that answers your question. Is there one or two people? The answer is yes. So there are those who were yes, arrested in a manner so what, yes. not so, prepared so by, people, the, by the people, law. There are people who were illegally detained by state agencies he, he, that's what i'm saying okay yeah i, I don't and know why what, <laughs> and that's what you wanted so to be, yeah. so so <clears throat> when that happens <clears throat> how do people seek redress 
Now, when you come to when they come to you, how do you help them? That's why we are emphasizing the aspect of uh, conducting arrests legally, because Article 23 of the Constitution is instructive. It outlines the rights of suspects. You have identified yourself. You have give, give somebody a chance to inform the next of kin because people are followed up by their relatives. Now, where that is not done, it is a concern to all of us. So anyway, the good thing is that you have confirmed there are cases where state agencies have detained people illegally. That's, 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 that's right. The, the Uganda Human Rights Commission has confirmed that. Yeah. So now, when, when the Uganda Human Rights Commission says, actually there are those cases, you may, you may disagree on the numbers, their own government and their own agencies is indicting them yeah. for illegal detention, illegal arrest. Where do you run to? But, but the point, that's a the point. They've not done what they're supposed to do. Because you see, under the Constitution, they have power. I can even ask him, have you visited a CMI? Have you visited CMI where most of these people have come to say we've been detained in the basement at CMI? These people have also several times been blocked from visiting these agencies. Because we've been engaging with them, saying, you know, every time a person comes from CMI, they come saying, we've left there hundreds of people, those we don't even know about. Some of them, of course, are related to NUP, but others for all sorts of reasons that uh, people are picked up and taken there. And we're saying the commission under the constitution is given power to visit all these areas where Ugandans are detained, whether uh, prisons or even ungazetted places of detention. So they know that there are safe houses in this country. It's, everyone knows about it. You remember in around 2019, the Committee of Parliament uh, on Human Rights tried to visit these detention <coughs> places. They were blocked uh, from, from going there. So you keep asking yourself, what is the Uganda Human Rights Commission doing? The Uganda Human Rights Commission even has powers to order for the release of anybody who is illegally detained, even without going, first going to court. They have such powers under the Constitution. But they never use them, and they rather come, the chairperson comes to play politics. I saw the other day her saying that NUP is trying to, you know, uh, do politics around the missing person. Come on. These people, who are good enough, you're showing their names. These are real people. They are, these are people who are really, really affected by this. A headmaster was picked up in Mubende. Our president was there yesterday to, to visit the family. Because he removed Genom 7, his poster, from a public school. And from that time, he has been missing up to now. The Uganda Human Rights Commission is conspicuously silent. So where do Ugandans go? Because, you see, when Masereka was uh, uh, tortured, you know, you've been showing the images here, badly, badly tortured. Uh, where he, when he came, he said he was at CMI. And he even had a release paper from, uh, uh, you know, uh, SIU Chileka. And, you know, he, he filed a case in court, and it has taken all these months from that time up to now. The case has not been heard. So you go to court, you go to the Uganda Human Rights Commission, uh, you, you don't get justice. And I want to say also that it's not only about abductions. You know, from Arua, we have been filing complaints with the Uganda Human Rights Commission. When uh, uh, Yasin Kaumawa was shot dead in cold blood by security forces, we filed a case with the Uganda Human Rights Commission. When our president was blocked illegally from carrying out consultations, we went to the Uganda Human Rights Commission. When he, when he was blocked from carrying out his music shows, we went to the Uganda Human Rights Commission. When he was illegally detained at home uh, in what they called say, uh, protective uh, arrest or whatever, we went to the Uganda Human Rights Commission. So tell me if there is any single case that they have investigated. Kamadi. Um. It is important to be on spaces like this because it helps us to throw more light on some of these aspects. One, you see, I have had very many people, some people, criticizing the Uganda Human Rights Commission. But it is important to, to know that when the commission does its work, make, uh, uh, documents its findings, the constitution mandates the commission to present a report to parliament. Now, parliament has an oversight role to invite responsible government MDAs to answer certain questions. It is therefore unfair to come back to the commission that did some work, presented its findings to parliament. The questions, for instance, is raising, if I have told you 69 people were found 
uh, to be missing. We have documented the issues and made recommendations to Parliament. Now you don't come back and say the Commission is doing nothing. The other day you wrote, we received your letter, 25 people. We have gone out of our way and uh, 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 furnished you with findings about the seven. In human rights work, it's, about, it's not about numbers, by the way. One is too many. The human rights-based approach is to the effect that every individual person's rights should be respected. First of all, for example, <coughs> he, he brings the history, you know, recent history of Arua. Yasin Kayima. He's, he's, uh, now, the, uh, yeah. I, I was coming to that. Yes. Let me come to that. You are speaking to somebody who visited your party president and even other leaders right from Gulu. I personally was in Gulu prison. Uh, when those people were arrested and brought to Gulu. And, and uh, what? Uh, apart from that, you see the way the commission works. There is a, a part of Uganda, which I don't want to mention for sensitivity reasons, where they expect instant justice. That you lodge a complaint today, you get the, the justice uh, today. Come but, on. But, uh, yeah, no, no, no. Let, okay, me, let, me, let, me, let, let me explain you this. You remember in wait, Arua. You wait, remember in Arua. Wait a minute. Robert, Robert Chabulani. Wait a minute, Mr. A Pamaga. man who walked, who was energetic, who was on a campaign trail for his candidate. And when he was arrest, arrested there, when he came out, he was a man who had been tortured so badly. He had we, actually to seek medical attention we, in the United States. We, the chief executive of the country is on record having said that he saw Bobby Wine that they had actually been beaten properly. You report to this kind of executive. How can you do your work when the president says he was beaten properly? When you mention the chief executive, you mentioned the president of NOP. That is a political terrain which I wouldn't want to enter into. No, no, no. Me, no. I, for us, we are undertaken combatants. And let me update you. Cases were registered with the commission, investigated. You know very well the misfortune that befell us in November 20, uh, <coughs> 2019. For a period of two years, the commission was not fully constituted. As I speak now, Tribunal hearings have started. And those matters he's talking about are some of the matters that were investigated to the logical conclusion. They are coming up for hearings before the tribunal. So we couldn't have delivered justice overnight and with a commission that was not legally fully constituted. I know it is an emotive matter, but let's give credit where it is due. Okay, I, I, I know in your, in, your work, due? in your work of defending the rights of Ugandans, are you working in a terrain that can actually give you latitude to work, that give you the space to do your job and defend people's rights. I, I'm asking this because if you have seen a Ugandan who is working and is okay, and is detained, and he comes back in a vegetative condition, as a Ugandan, even not just as a human rights uh, director in the commission, what does that make you feel? It if, if, if they have just said, you know, we have fought him with guns, he's fighting the state. And, and that is documented. And then the case, which is, which is a high case of treason, is just ignored. What does that make you feel? Are you we, working in a political, in a terrain that is conducive for you even to do your job? We, I want to tell you, Patrick and the viewers, that we do our work uh, independently. We investigate, we visit these places of detention, we conduct human rights education. But uh, the, the, there are challenges within society, and I've said it before, uh, both <coughs> here and when we meet at KFM, that you cannot stop, unfortunately, vi uh, violations from happening. There's a time I gave you an example. Hospitals have been with us since time immemorial, but have you stopped people from falling sick? Unfortunately not. Now. Our role is to sensitize. Even today, I'm from a training of police <coughs> personnel, telling them exactly not to do the things we are discussing here. But like in any other society, there is one or two bad apples. <coughs> mm -hmm. We shouldn't base on those to criticize and uh, not really realize a few uh, milestones certain institutions are doing. Challenges are there, but there is also work that is being done. Do you consider of that course. submission of bad apples perhaps responsible for what we see? It's, it's ridiculous to say the least. It's a ridiculous argument. First of all, 
Mr. Kamadi does not seem to maybe understand the powers the commission has. The, the, the Uganda Human Rights Commission, the framers of this constitution gave it a lot of powers. It's not about reporting the parliament. No, that's just one of the constitutional obligations you have to do every year. But the most important power in that, under that constitution is for you to visit these detention centers to give orders, clear orders. Stop abducting people. Stop arresting people. Stop charging people, uh, civilians, before military courts. Clearly giving directives to these state agencies. They have those powers under the Uganda constitution. But like I said, because they're being politics, and because you see the constitution even makes them one of the self-accounting agencies, gives them independence. So in other words, uh, the expectation of the framers of the constitution, if they, 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 the people who frame this constitution were to tell you what they envisaged, it's not what we have today in form of the Uganda Human Rights Commission. Because the, the, the record of Uganda on, with regard to Uganda Human Rights, uh, to the respect of, for human rights, has been deteriorating every year. Now we're talking about a regime which shamelessly comes out to say we have, clo we have closed the UN office uh, for human rights. Well, what does that tell you, Patrick? What does that tell you about how this regime views uh, human rights and, 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 and the, the context in which you operate? So for me, I don't want us to uh, look at uh, these issues and to uh, downplay them. I want us to know that behind whatever we are saying are lives of people. Those young people who are, who are showing on the screen have been in custody for over two years for no crime whatsoever. They were picked up from different places and then the regime, because uh, then they, they, they came up with all sorts of bogus charges placed on them. They are before a military court. None of them is a military officer. They are civilians being tried by uh, a military court. Uh, they have not been tried actually for two years. Their trial has not yet started. They have not called a single witness in that case. And then you have a director in Human Rights Commission so, coming so out. So how to, do you respond to this? To, Mr. To Rubongoya about. is entitled to his opinion, but it is important to n note that in the protection and promotion of human rights, however much you are affected, you have to operate within the legal framework. For instance, these are certain facts that people don't appreciate. Once a matter is in a court of law, the very concern you are quoting, I came with a copy here, and the, I have a master of the provisions of this constitution. Under Article 53, bars the commission from handling any matter pending before a court of law or a judicial tribunal. Once the matter is before a court, it is outside the commission's jurisdiction. Some Even when a civilian some, some is, under military, is, is under military no, tribunal? No, I'm coming to that. Okay. Just one week ago, our chairperson wrote to the general court marshal over you, the, 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 uh, your people you are talking about who, who are being tried by the court marshal. And that was uh, in following up the guidance, uh, the, the, the decision of the court of appeal, and earlier on there was one by the Supreme Court. It is in black and white, and it is unfair to say you, you, you are not doing anything. Are you privy to that information? I am actually. And, and it I happened. So, so, and so, it so happened. If, if the commission has acted. And, and, and no, it no, even no. happened. It has because at the end of the day, they are going to go and pick uh, them up. Patrick, yeah. it even happened before the scaffold. The scaffold was in the afternoon, the one we saw. The chairperson had already taken a step in the morning. You see, uh, one of the questions, one of the clear things that you need to understand. What is all about is a technicality that, you know, when a matter is pending before a court. I have already indicated that almost all these people, before they are eventually brought to the military court, they are abducted and taken away for months when nobody knows where they are. And the information is always within the knowledge of the Human Rights Commission. When Bobby Young was abducted recently, we informed the uh, Uganda Human Rights Commission about this. We always try to be on record. And this gentleman spends eight days in detention. And I'm saying that within that window, before this person is produced, before any court, the Uganda Human Rights Commission must write and order that these people are either released or produced before court within 48 hours. And once a person go, is uh, under detention for more than 48 hours, that automatically goes into the realm of an illegal detention. And that has, this is what has happened to most of our people. So 
That's the information I have to give him. It's, it, the, 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 I, I, am, I know what the provisions of the law say about the, the, the powers of the commission and all that. But you see, if you also understand the context in which you operate, the best thing to do as a Uganda Human Rights Commission, as a leadership, if you know that uh, these matters are beyond us, the, 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 uh, the military will not respect what we tell them, etc., etc., then resign. Uh, resign uh, and be on record that we are not able to operate under this context. That is what any person who, who, who really values their reputation would do. Uh, you uh, know? Mr. Dionabia Kamadi, maybe you're uh, responsible uh, for uh, take uh, a break. Yeah. Patrick, mm -hmm. we do a challenging job where you are thanked when you have delivered, where there is a challenge, the, uh, uh, nobody recognizes what you, you have done. Mr. Rubongoya is conveniently quoting the provisions of the Constitution, which he thinks are relevant to his point, and he forgets the one I'm um, also quoting. I, I told you that yeah. I know about so it. You, you, need, it. you need to read the Constitution as a whole. And not, I have quoted not, it. Not selectively. It's very, for instance, if you are saying people were abducted in a drone and taken to an unknown places, the commission is mandated to inspect places of detention authorized by law. Where would you expect us to find them? It's like the case of safe houses we sometimes talk about. They are not gazetted. You cannot locate them. It becomes a challenge. Now, I would be expecting you to join hands with us and impress it upon the security agencies in line with the constitutional mandate, the dictate of the Constitution, at Article 221, to do their work while respecting human rights. But because the Human Rights Commission is there as a secretariat for the protection and promotion of human rights, don't expect the commission to find somebody in your garage, for instance, a, a place which <coughs> is not authorized by law. So let's see. Uh, uh, we should be working together. This is civic education, political parties, Uganda Human Rights Commission, the academia, civil society. Let's join hands instead of pointing, accusing fingers to your institution or okay. to all right. my uh, Okay, gentlemen. And then uh, we for, sort for, out for, for, the okay. issue. Hold on to your points, gentlemen, okay. because you're going to take a break and on the spot, we'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guests tonight are David Louis Lubongoya, Secretary General of the National Unity Platform, and Mr. Bionabie Kamadi, who's the director at the Uganda Human Rights Commission. And the show tonight, we're trying to shed a light on the human rights in Uganda, protection and also violation. But, Mr. Kamadi, you, you can understand that there's a degree of impunity in Uganda. I don't know whether you realize that. And if you're working in a country where there's a high level of impunity, that makes you work hard. In the protection and promotion of human rights, we don't condone impunity, we don't condone criminality, name it. Everybody must be held accountable for his <coughs> or her actions. That said, it's everybody's responsibility. The mistake we make is to look at one institution, say the executive, or you focus on parliament, criticize it to the core, or focus on the judiciary, in this case it is UHRC. But if there is a general malaise, then let's come uh, out together as a collective. Even the political parties, they themselves are not very clean, and I'm not talking about NOOP, I'm talking about the entire uh, 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 governance architecture. We have monitored party primary elections, you've been here, what do you see? You know. All these challenges, we must address them head on. Reckless driving on our roads. We need to go back and identify what is wrong. Value systems. What is wrong? It is not uncommon. The other day, just up here, Christ uh, 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 this church here. Christ the King. It's called Christ the King? No, the one of Nakasero. Okay, all saints. All saints. I saw somebody driving... A, what you would consider a respectable vehicle, a corporate person throwing a bottle of soda, an empty bottle of soda, right in the trench uh, shortly after Nakasero Hospital. And I said, what is this? And yesterday you must have seen Nema coming out to say six million if you do that. 
uh, although that is a debate for another day. So all these challenges are there, but what matters is we must collectively fix them. Article 17 of this constitution is about the duties and responsibilities of a citizen. The human rights we are discussing are not enjoyed in a vacuum. To what extent have we paid our taxes, fulfilled our duties and obligations uh, uh, in order to ask for accountability? So you raise a pertinent issue, uh, and I wouldn't want us to focus on uh, one particular institution. Let all of us collectively, you see border borders, crisscrossing uh, where uh, vehicles have stopped, and the, some of the policemen are watching. All those so, are so, challenges. So, so, you know, mm -hmm. you know what Amadi is, say, is saying, we are, they are working in a certain environment, and we are all in this kind of environment. And, and, and I've told you, at one point they have moved to write to the general court marshal, to write to whoever, and, and, and even give a report to parliament. Beyond that, even if they said release and somebody's not released, they, they are not, they are not the police, they are not the military, they are not going to pick arms. Do you understand the, 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 the environment they are working in? Definitely. Do you appreciate? Um, someone uh, famously said that there are times when you may be powerless to prevent injustice, but there must never be a time when you fail to protest. Certainly the expectations of the Uganda Human Rights Commission, like at the judiciary and all institutions in this country, are not high. What we expect from the Uganda Human Rights Commission is simply to come out and condemn what is wrong. For the citizens, you know that actually we have a commission which thinks about these things. But every time the chairperson comes out, you've been seeing her in the press, she's almost blaming the victims, you know, downplaying. At some point says, oh, where are the, the, the thousand which NEP is always talking about? There are only 18 people. As if 18 is just you know, a number to, 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 to look at, you know? <laughs> so what we, you, you know, I, I understand the context in which they operate, and yeah. I wouldn't want to go so much into details. For example, uh, of our engagement, when Honorable Chagulani was arrested illegally, tortured in Arua, and in the aftermath, we had a very, very candid conversation with the late chairperson of the commission, and he took us through the challenges of the Human Rights Commission in this country. So. I, I would really, really understand the context in which they operate. The challenge we have is that the current commission, the, 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 the specifically the chairperson and the current crop of commissioners we have, don't seem to understand because if you come up and say that this, these are arrests, these are not abductions, even a child in a NASA in primary school can tell a difference between how a person is being arrested and that another person is being abducted. You know, but then the chairperson, the whole chairperson of a, of a human rights commission, comes out and downplays something as serious and as grave as abduction. So you know, for us, uh, what I want to emphasize is that we don't think that the Uganda Human Rights Commission will all of a sudden change things in this country. They are as powerless, they are as captured as all other institutions. Our struggle is about changing this country at the core and making sure that all institutions can finally be free from the clutch of the military regime. But what we expect from the Uganda Human Rights Commission is to come out boldly call a spade a spade, uh, uh, call upon these uh, security agencies to stop abducting citizens with impunity, to stop torturing people. You saw what happened about uh, Kakweza. You saw his back. I did not see the Human Rights Commission come up with a statement about something deplorable like that. You know, you saw Masereka come out with uh, torture marks, clearly with uh, a, a released order from the police. These are matters which brought to the attention of the Uganda Human Rights Commission. And they just kept quiet. The only time they come up is to, 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 to downplay uh, whatever has been going on. So that is what I can say. Uh, that the expectation is not that they are going to order for the release of all these people and then they will be respected. So not I, at all. I read your human rights reports, the annual human rights reports. And uh, I, when I look at them sometimes, I wonder when I read the, 19, the 2016, 2017, they just look similar. Sometimes I even wonder whether you just have a template and you fix in what. Because on top, you have the Uganda police, you have the military violating human rights. And, and you also make recommendations as, as you take those reports to parliament. But um, Kamadi, are you sometimes frustrated that the recommendations you give are actually never acted upon? And the, in the following year, you'll come with a report with a similar violation done by the similar entities. Let me sensitize you. Because uh, one of my roles is sensitization. And I said this is a space for such a things to happen. First of all, it's not true 
that every report you read, it has similar things. What, what you need to understand that human rights are human rights. Right to life in 1998 will be right to life in 2023. So when you are reading these reports, you need to understand the ingredients, the dynamics. No, by the way, don't go no, there. No, 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 I'm no, talking no. about the, those who are violating human rights in Uganda. The culprits are the same. If, if you bring me reports from the last five years, who is violating? It's police, it's the military. And the recommendation you give are the same. That is true. The recommendations are not, they are not the same every time, but it can and be, the let way, me tell you, the way, I'm not just and, and defending. Nobody, nobody even takes serious uh, about uh, your recommendations. I'm not, I'm not uh, just defending. Let me, like I said, let me with due respect sensitize you. If we told the parliament to ratify the optional protocol against torture in, uh, in 2015, and the ratification process has not yet been done. <coughs> Do you expect us to close our doors and keep quiet? We call that advocacy. So it's you, not regurgitating. So, so you ask it, it for the it, next, next the same year? It's not regurgitating. That's what I'm saying, that you just have a template, you keep repeating. You see, you regurgitate if, actually, if, if you want the analogy to come out clearly, institutions ask for money in this financial year. If you ask for five billion and government gives you two, the next financial year, so, you don't so, ask because so they, they didn't give you. report, who mm. has come up on top on violation of human rights? Now, this annual... I'm asking, the, uh, who, uh, who is coming up on top it for is the violation the, of human rights? It, uh, uh, in your uh, own reports? It is usually the Uganda police force. That's what I mean. Uh, that's what I'm saying. When you look at 2016 throughout, Uganda police and the military are always coming on top. It among the institution violating rights of Ugandans. You can appreciate they, right. are, they, are, they are in contact with the population every day, but I invite you to read the specifics, not to generalize. It is important to, to read the specifics. Because if you generalize, you run a danger of misrepresenting facts. This report is well uh, 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 compiled by human rights experts. I it, read them. It would be unfortunate. I, I read them for, the, for, for one reason, it, because I'll have to meet people it, like you. It would be unfortunate. I read them. Now, you, you read what I have authored. Do you want to say you understand it better than me who has authored it? But you see also... I've just brought you to accept what I've been saying something. to you for the last, the last five minutes. Let, let me tell you something. The, on top of those who are violating the rights of Ugandans, that according to your reports, it's always police and the military. And if we go to the recommendation, what you recommend is the same. You're only telling me that if they never acted upon it five years ago, you'll definitely have you, to bring it back. You have the, the advantage of being a moderator, but if I can ask you, what, what is the way forward? Because you have a role as the media. What should be the way forward? If year in, year out, the challenges are associated with these security agencies, what is, what is your take? Because you are always to inform. Uh, people, like, people like you in developed countries actually resign their jobs. Don't talk as Kamada, uh, to, uh, to Kamada as an individual. Uh, do you, do you look at the institution. We are talking yeah. about the institutional framework. But, but you see, the even if you talk about. But let me also tell you something. For example, this report on page 86, it has five people who they claim were missing. Four of them actual relatives of missing persons, but the Uganda Human Rights Commission indicated them as missing people. Kafero Matthew so, has never been abducted, Chigozi Matthew, Namaya Njasara, Nawiri Agnes. They are the only five people they captured in their report, and these five, out of uh, five people that they indicated, four were relatives. <coughs> I'm just trying to show you how unserious they are in, in their work. Because I, I looked at this report. If they're relatives and they're missing, they shouldn't be reported? No, what I'm saying is that what they put here as missing people were the people who reported, and then they say this person is missing. So now Agnes is a wife to Canada Muhammad. But when in their report, when they say missing persons, they write Nawere Agnes as a missing person. And of course, some others that uh, they indicate uh, are people that, uh, as they indicate as uh, NUP supporters who are missing, so, so in other words, I'm trying to show you how unserious uh, they, they, they take this work. Because, and and this, this is factual. Just look at the people who they indicated. That is to show that they don't do research. Because we gave them a list and good enough it was captured there. Actually, that is his docket. Research and the Hundreds of people who were missing 
In their report, they did not talk about the circumstances of these people. And if a person uh, is uh, abducted, held in communicado like the team in uh, Chotera, <coughs> and the person spent their six months, they have lost livelihood, they have lost, uh, in some cases, uh, their, their spouse has left, they, they have lost income and everything. So, and then the Human Rights Commission comes up to do what? So that these people are released. What has happened to these people? Have you followed up to ensure that at least these people are compensated? You know, because if someone is uh, abducted, and, and like you rightly said, these people are abducted, they are kept in, in uh, detention facilities for all this time, they come up, and then what does the commission do? They just come to say, oh, we found that these people uh, are no longer missing. So is that, about is that the, the only thing that the commission should be, should, should be uh, concerned about? You see, it's good we are here discussing these things. That report, you have opened a section which we call uh, 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 to do with monitoring and inspections. But there's also a chapter on complaints management, which we are handled. Now, when we show you uh, what, uh, the monitor, uh, uh, what was monitored, then there are specifics on complaints management. And that is the point I earlier on alluded to. We, uh, we don't expect instant justice. I don't have on my fingertips the many cases that are being investigated to be uh, uh, determined before the tribunal. But they are there. It would be foolhardy to think that if we find a person maybe was tortured, our only preoccupation is to say, uh, 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 you have been found, bye-bye, that's okay. No. There are, there are a number of other cases that are being processed, and uh, I'm not at liberty at this point in time to divulge the stages at, at which investigations are, because these matters are going to come up before the tribunal. But I that, can say on that record should, that, that none of that, our victims... That should be appreciated. None of our victims <coughs> who have been tortured in hundreds, who have been abducted in hundreds, in thousands, has been compensated, has been given. At least, uh, not even one wh where the commission has said we've given this award, uh, and, and then maybe government fails to do that, because that's well, another, uh, another You see, we, we, we use a first-in, first-out principle. Like you have, I have said earlier on, for a number of years, the commission was not fully constituted. We are talking about violations largely now emerging from 2021. This is 2023. But as of 2020, we had a backlog. Even the tribunals I'm talking about, which have now commenced, have not commenced with the cases of 2021. We must appreciate that. So you have issues of capacity? Uh, if from what I've, yeah. uh, uh, I've said, it, you don't it, have it, enough it capacity to deal with these issues in the whole country. The capacity is there, but the capacity had been if I may use the word incapacitated, by the absence of a fully constituted commission. Now the capacity is there, and the matters it's are being handled. It's a question handled. of capacity, but mm. also a question of competence, uh, in my view. And uh, th that's, that's a bigger question of competence. See, uh, the, what, which people are we uh, sending to that commission? My He's view, the director, and I, uh, I, I really I, understand. I know you have regional offices the, the in one for, for Central that is right there in Naguru. Yes. But, but if, honestly, you lack some capacity to deal with these challenges across Uganda. There is no lack of capacity in investigating complaints of human rights violations. For instance, during the time the, the commission was not fully constituted, we were not barred from conducting investigations. The only, uh, actually the backlog could uh, more than doubled because investigations were being conducted. The commission is spread across, across the country. But the, the, the chairperson of the commission Maybe what you couldn't do was to issue the report, but the system, the work, no, was, the the work was going on. The tribunal couldn't sit because legally it is presented over by a panel or uh, chaired by the chairperson. And as of course, we speak. And, and of course, that also shows you uh, how, uh, how how human rights cases are, or how, man, how, how human rights issues are treated in this country. That you have the Uganda Human Rights Commission without uh, commissioners for two years. You know that that tells you how much. Uh, the, the regime that does not really, really take serious these issues. But one of the other aspects I want to emphasize, uh, and when I talk about the question of uh, competence of, of the commission, when you read the constitution, and the constitution says, you know, the chairperson should be a person who should be at the level of a high court judge. You know, the expectations of the constitution quickly come in. 
But when you have a chairperson coming to say, ah, NUP is doing politics. You know, that's what I'm trying to take. You imagine if you were reporting a case so before a, problem, a judge. You have a problem with Madame Mnangadi. Of course, I'm telling you that the, 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 it's uh, absolute. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to look for the best words she use. But well, imagine if you were reporting a complaint before a commission, whose chairperson is everywhere in the press saying, ah, these people are just doing politics. Oh, only 18 people are missing. Oh, you're not downplaying serious issues of human rights violations. This country, I think, has never experienced these kinds of uh, violations r that we are seeing now. You know, uh, of course, I was not there during the Idi Amin period. We've read about the, the violations that took place and all that. But these people have captured the media, have captured the, status, uh, the state apparatus, that in the aftermath of the election, aside from the people who were murdered in 2020, and of course in the period after that, then you go on a, uh, on a spree abducting thousands of citizens with impunity. And there has been no justice for the victims of these grave violations. I'll tell you that many of our supporters lost limbs. Some of them, uh, there's, you saw us at the human rights conference that we held in Nairobi. Because we couldn't hold it here in, in, in Kampala, you know the, what, what happens when we try to hold these events. People lost lives. Others saw their relatives being killed uh, in, in these uh, safe houses and all that. And what does the Uganda Human Rights Commission do and all these other agencies? They behave as if the situation is normal. So the people of Uganda need to know that they are on their own and to continue struggling to see that this uh, situation changes and that institutions like the Uganda Human Rights Commission and all other agencies are finally freed from uh, the capture that they've been subjected you know, to. You know, you talked about the backlog. There have been so many ugly things that have happened in Uganda, including from 2016, if you remember what happened in Kasese. Yeah. If you remember the mowing down with the cannon, with the guns that took down people, over 100 people died there. And then they were arrested for four, almost four years, and then they are released <coughs> without any charge. Those things will come back to haunt whoever is in charge. And Om is can, still under... He, he cannot uh, go to... By the way, he cannot he, go he's to... still under what they call preventive arrest. And, and the, you know? have a whole king of a whole tribe who cannot even access his kingdom. Um, the commission is bad. I will continue repeating myself <laughs> from handling a matter which is before a court of law. But before that... Uh, the commission carried out a special investigation and there is a report documented about the challenges of Kasese. <laughs> I don't have ever given you a copy, Patrick. I, I gave you a copy. So uh, uh, you, you should appreciate. I don't know if you have read it no, and, you, didn't. and you are disputing what is in it. Because I've remembered I gave you a copy at KFM. So that is an area that we have also looked into. But when it comes to the right to a speedy and fair trial, it is a fundamental human right, and we urge uh, the, 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 the judiciary to, 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 to expedite the hearing. That is all we can say. There was a classic yeah. example in Arua where guns were placed <laughs> on, on Bobby White, that he, they had caught him with guns that he wants to fight the government. And if that was the case, this is a high case of treason. That, that they lost the interest in such. How? Now that, uh, that that is part of the I mean, ingredients. I mean you can see. That is part of the ingredients of the right to a fair hearing and the subject of investigation. But, but you know about that. You are going into the specifics. Well, I read about it like you did in the in the media. I did. But, but there was a complaint filed with the Uganda Human Rights Commission about that very issue, where he was uh, tortured very very uh, brutally and uh, kept under military detention. Uh, before it was eventually produced before a military court and these charges uh, dropped and many many other ugly things have happened and uh, the commission under the constitution you see the commission has different aspects it has a tribunal the tribunal is which is the component which is bad from hearing complaints which are before other bodies but like i said the powers of the uganda human rights commission are wide but uh, uh, you know uh, 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 my brother Rubongoya, you are uh, 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 there is a language that you use that I may not use. But let me say this. Honorable Kiagulanyi, the chairperson of the commission, the late, actually used my, the vehicle I use to go and visit Honorable Kiagulanyi in Makindye. You know very well that the commission 
facilitated, visited him, and was yeah. fully concerned in the entire processes leading to his release. Now, actually on his burial, Honorable Kiagulan recognized how he helped him. Yeah, and but that, you see, that was the, the commission working. You see, this is what yeah. I'm telling you. You mm -hmm. see, the powers that are specified in the, cons in the constitution of the commission, for example, did you come out uh, to condemn what had happened, but also to recognize that it was illegal, to also cr uh, clearly indicate that he had been tortured, and further beyond that, to hear this matter, investigate it, hear it, and make orders. That's what I'm talking about. You know, when we, ca we came to you and filed a complaint about matters arising from Arua, these other aspects, and really we, we, we salute the late chairperson, he was definitely a much better chairperson than uh, what you have now. Uh, what I can say is that 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 was a very good step and recognize it, but we filed a complaint. And it's not only us, you remember after the 2016 election, the commission visited uh, Dr. Chiza Besiji, who was also under illegal detention at his home. And you know up to now, there's nothing that has happened in terms of the powers of the commission to issue certain orders, compensatory orders, uh, and also to make sure that this, there's no repeat to, this, to, to these issues. Okay. Because, for example, <coughs> if people are being held at their home in the name of preventive arrest, I would expect the Uganda Human Rights Commission to come up and clearly say that this is a violation of human rights okay, gentlemen. and it is illegal. Okay, Lewis and Kamadi, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I'll be reading your comments and your questions. I'm sure you've been sending them on our WhatsApp n numbers. Uh, please keep it civil so that we can be able to read every question or every comment that you have. Or maybe every report or every information that you give us tonight. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara, and my guests tonight are David Lewis Rubongoya, Secretary General of National Unity Platform, and we also have Mr. De Mr. Bionavia Kamadi, who is a director at the Uganda Human Rights Commission, and we're discussing human rights in Uganda, the violation and also the, the protection of human rights. Of course, uh, Mr. Louis Lubongoya is saying there has been a violation, and the Kamadi is saying they are trying to protect. Let me go for your questions and your comments. I have uh, somebody saying the commission was quick to issue a statement over the beating of Majambere, but so it no more for Kakwenza, Masereka, and others. And uh, I am Norman here in Natete, having been in a safe house for two months. I would describe it as the Guantanamo Bay of Uganda. The big issue in Uganda is that civil servants are in offices to earn a living and not fulfill their mandate. It's no surprise that Mr. Hamadi is ignorant about the responsibilities of his job. He and the Ugandan Human Rights Commission are there to impress the appointing authority and deem it too ambitious to challenge the government, the government's grave human rights violation. Maybe you can go for that, Mr. Hamadi. There's nothing to comment about. Those are his opinions. I have, uh, hi Patrick and the guests. I want to put it to, to Mr. Kamadi of the commission that they are chilling and enjoying their monthly checks. Recently, a government paper reported sexual and other human rights abuses inside the Butavika hospital. The hospital denied it. The commission is quiet and that dies off. If the stories are wrong, we should then see Butavika suing New Vision for defamation, not just release a press statement. What? What abuses trigger this commission into action if sexual abuse of patients in admission doesn't matter? And that's Daniel. The, the issue of Tabika is under investigation. I'm happy to report. And the, a report will be issued as soon as uh, the investigation is concluded. Good evening, my fellow Ugandans. Please, Human Rights Commission in Uganda in under the armpit, is under the armpits of the president, and all those guys are very powerless. Imagine recently they awarded some, someone six million after being detained for years, yet he did nothing. The chairperson of the commission is NRM leaning, and she hated Bobby Wayne with all her life. We pray that we can get another president who will bring deliverance to Ugandans, is called Julius. And, uh, Thank you, NTV. You are just living by the mercy of NRM government because they can do whatever they wish to the citizen and nothing is done. And life goes on. Maybe one day it will change. Okelo Patrick Bonio from Busega. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, for the show today morning. I saw youth 
from the torture survivors movement being brutally arrested by army and police as they went to Uganda Human Rights main officers deliver a petition. Please help me ask that representative of you, Uganda Human Rights Commission. Do they fear suing policemen and army men who abduct and torture citizens just because of having different political affiliations? Stakang and Nicholas watching live from Bulange. I don't know whether you know about the people who were trying to come to your office this morning. Yes, I was not at the office today, but I'm aware like any other Ugandan because it was all over in social media. And uh, that was a response by the Uganda police force. And um, where the police act, takes action, we expect it to act within the legal framework. So uh, it is unfortunate and regrettable that uh, the people were handled in the way we saw. And this is what we've been saying and sensitizing the police. Like I told you, ironically, this morning I was meeting a different group of police officers, as the others were also somewhere. <coughs> but purely that is the, a mandate of the police, and they are doing their work. The police can go anywhere. Today they came to the commission, but the, the underlying point is I'm not privy to the issues that the, 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 the people who are wrapped up uh, were coming to, 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 to do, but uh, the manner of, the, <coughs> of handling them should have been humane, and it should be humane for every other Ugandan. Okay. Um, all right. So it looks like uh, nobody had a question for, for Mr. Vongoya. U Uganda Human Rights Commission is doing nothing. I think these people of Uganda Human Rights Commission are in their own country, and they don't see the mess in this country, in Uganda. This is a Gaba Smart in Imbarara. Okay, so maybe I'm going to take one more. Thank you for the show, Mr. Kamara. It's a, a, a one man against two show. Let's give diligence where it is due. Mr. Rupungwe is seeking justice within one day. It's a matter of time. Let the commission do its work without pressure from noob supporters. Ivan Rubihayo in Munyonyo. Uh, Thank you for the show. Uganda is bleeding. If I see how innocent Ugandans are being abducted, tortured, Uganda Human Rights Commission has done nothing, just wasting taxpayers' money. Thank you very much, and I think I can stop on all those, uh, those, those comments and those questions. Let me give you, gentlemen, uh, each one of you, to do your concluding remarks. Let me begin with you, Mr. David Lewis, Rubamboya. Yeah, I think uh, Ugandans have spoken. All these comments uh, clearly show uh, what you can think of uh, the Uganda Human Rights Commission and the human rights record of uh, the regime of Mr. Museveni. Uh, it's very, very unfortunate uh, that this is uh, the kind of country we live in. Everywhere you go in the world, by the way, Uganda is known for its abuse of human rights uh, as we speak. I cannot finish this show without talking about uh, Honorable Alan Sewanyana and Honorable Muhammad Segirinya, our two members of parliament who have been in detention for close to two years now uh, without even being tried. Uh, and, and that again shows you uh, the kind of challenge uh, that, that we have. Uh, you know, you have two members of parliament, the regime accuses them of all sorts of things. Uh, they, they want access to medical treatment. Honorable Alan Sewanyan, as you know, has been in, in a terrible health situation. He's not uh, getting the uh, medical attention he so much desires. and. All these things, again, go back to the Uganda Human Rights Commission, to other institutions which should be protecting human rights in this country. But my first final message is that the conditions that we've talked about will not change themselves. They will change if we, the people of Uganda, the citizens of this country, come up and fight for our space and change this country and have a leadership that truly respects the rule of law, constitutionalism, democracy, and human rights. Your part in short. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kamara. I had forgotten to comment on one important thing you raised in your uh, introduction. The issue of the UN Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights is a government of Uganda affair and foreign affairs. The Uganda Human Rights Commission has absolutely no role. That's why I never asked about uh -huh. it. Mm -hmm. uh, but you raised it, and I thought it was important to talk about it. Um, going forward, Protection and promotion of human rights is a daunting task. It is a challenge. Uh, it is absolutely important that all stakeholders get concerned. We come together. And instead of pinpointing and accusing finger, 
including yourself, Mr. Kamara, and I mean the media, you should be joining, uh, joining other stakeholders in finding solutions. Lamenting, pointing, accusing fingers will not help us much. But let's appreciate uh, where positive strides have been made. It is unfair to say that somebody exists and <coughs> wakes up every morning and does some work and you don't recognize even what is documented. Okay. That is very unfair. So, but going <coughs> forward, the challenges we've been discussing, it is everybody's responsibility to ensure that we work towards eliminating them. Nobody would like to see somebody in illegal detention. Nobody would like to see somebody suffering or torturing, uh, being tortured. We are all concerned. And we urge those who are responsible for the perpetrators of those violations to stop with, forthwith, and then everybody can live peacefully in our country. Bionabie Kamadi from Uganda Human Rights Commission, thank you so much. Mr. David Lewis Lwongoya from NUP, I thank you. But most of all, you, the viewer, I want to thank you for the privilege of your company. I read a book about two years ago, and this book is entitled The President is Missing. And somewhere in between there, they write about suspected terrorists who were captured by the American government. And these terrorists were being tortured and they could not talk. This book, by the way, is co-authored between Bill Clinton and James Patterson. And in the book they say, if you are not going to give us information, we shall torture you. These men were tortured and they didn't talk. So they told them, guess what? There are many people in the world who want you. We can take you to the Egyptians. You will tell them. They still they didn't talk. They said, we can take you to the Pakistanis. They will tell you. They, they will get information from you. These men were not talking. And in this book they say, I can see you're so hardened. Maybe we can give you back, we can give it to Ugandans. You will tell them. And perhaps they'll bring back or what is left of you to us. It's a book written by a former president of, of the United States. It's a political thriller. But can you imagine? They are single, single to Uganda as a country that can actually torture. What I know, if people, if a government fears the people, there's liberty. If the people fear the government, there's, there's, there is anarchy. But for our country, the government and the people, we are fearing each other. No wonder we're heading for turmoil. Good night and God bless Uganda.